this as more than 6,000 people around the world have been infected and at least 132 have died. Biotech companies scrambling to find a cure. Shares of Veer Biotechnology rising more than 20 percent in the last week as the company looks for a drug. Uh, right now we are joined by the CEO of Veer. Uh, welcome. Uh, and I'm wondering from your perspective, over the past few days, the numbers have been constantly changing uh, as far as what we've seen out of China on infections, uh, as far as what we've seen is needed in terms of drugs. How does the situation look to you right now? Well, it's very early uh, in the epidemic. It looks to be quite contagious. Uh, hopefully, it lo also looks to be somewhat less lethal than SARS was. But the rate of increase of the number of people infected uh, inside of China and outside of China is quite alarming at the moment. Well, Dr. Skangos, tell us about the efforts that you're putting to work at Veer. You guys are a young company. Tell us about the science that uh, you're, you're working on there and what you think you might be able to do. Sure. We, we have a very uh, interesting, powerful way to isolate antibodies that have potential therapeutic or prophylactic potential against a number of pathogens. Uh, an early example of our ability to do this is called MAB114, which is an anti-Ebola antibody. That was one of the two drugs uh, tested in the Congo that seemed to provide uh, protection and uh, therapy for those patients, saving lives. We have antibodies against Zika, dengue, malaria. Uh, we have a very interesting antibody against hepatitis that we are going to bring into clinical trials this year, hopefully to contribute to a cure for hepatitis B virus. And in terms of respiratory viruses, we have a very interesting antibody that recognizes and neutralizes all strains of flu A that have arisen since the 1918 pandemic. That's all the seasonal strains, all the pandemic strains. That antibody is currently in clinical trials, and we hope that it will provide better protection for high-risk individuals. And of course, since it is broadly acting, it could provide uh, protection uh, against the next flu pandemic. Now, for coronaviruses, uh, we have a collection of antibodies that we had previously isolated against both SARS and MERS. Uh, the, we have a number of SARS antibodies, uh, and we have been testing them even before this epidemic to determine whether or not they could also inhibit other coronaviruses, anticipating that there would eventually be another coronavirus outbreak. And so we are currently testing our collection of coronavirus antibodies. Some of them have broad activity. They're capable of neutralizing, for example, all strains of SARS, as well as many uh, strains of coronavirus that have arisen in animals. And so the first thing we're doing is testing the existing antibodies to determine if any of them have activity against uh, the new uh, Wuhan virus. We don't know if that's true yet, but we will know that within a matter of weeks. At the same time, Doctor, we're going um, back to patients. Yep. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, uh, World Health Organization had a presser today uh, in which they uh, talked about potentially reconvening their emergency committee, again, as we try to monitor human-to-human -human transmission outside of China. Help our viewers understand, in a situation like this, how much coordination is there uh, between companies who are working on this, countries who are working on this, versus the proprietary nature of trying to get a win on this and keep it for yourself? Well, I think there's a tremendous amount of cooperation now. In order to actually identify a medicine and get it to people uh, in the shortest possible time is going to require co uh, cooperation between companies, between governmental agencies, between manufacturers, and between regulators. And so we are in active discussions, as I'm sure other companies are, and the goal here is to get our antibodies, if they should work, to patients as quickly as we can. This is a public health crisis. Uh, of course, we're a profit-making company. We would like to make money on the things that we do, but we also recognize the uh, potential uh, pandemic nature of this virus, and we want to do whatever we can to keep that from happening. And Dr. Skangos, just quickly, can you give us a sense of timelines we can expect for potentially getting any of these experimental treatments into human testing or being used in the field experimentally? Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, we will know, um, you know, if, if we have something that is <clears throat> potentially efficacious within a matter of weeks, if we're lucky, you know, two to three months, if, if we're not so lucky. I think in the end, we are pretty confident we can identify something within a, a small number of months. 
it will then take an additional number of months to have that manufactured and, and get it into people. So, so we're looking at what is normally a 10-month process, but again, we're talking with both uh, manufacturers and regulators to see if we can shave some time off of that timeline. And George, just briefly, your stock has reacted so uh, intensely to this news over the last couple of weeks. Do you, what are you telling investors right now? Does that make sense or are people a little bit overexcited uh, in terms of what they're doing in the stock market in reaction to all of these headlines? Yeah, well, we're telling investors the same thing we're telling you. We, 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 we have some antibodies. They may have some activity. We're testing them. We are hard at work identifying novel antibodies. We are um, optimistic that we'll be able to find antibodies uh, that have some protective uh, capacity in the end. Hard to predict the timelines. Um, and the, that's, that's the story. That's, that's what we're doing.